Let's play. Cyan, that's the voice that keeps coming in and talking to 
sketch and sort of giving him guidance. But the basic format, as you're seeing here, is that you're sort of dropping through different panels and trying to make it to the end. Now, I make a really stupid mistake here, but that effect was really cool. You saw me kick the enemy literally through two panels, which was awesome. Now I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this level. And now we have these flying enemies that are, they sort of have these whip tails. And so I'm jump kicking them. And luckily that one keeps coming back. But now I don't know where to go. And of course I fall off the end. Now, much like most of the games that we've talked about so far, there is no checkpoint here. So I have to start over. Now this Mortis guy is saying, now in this body of flesh and bone, I'm going to rock this world. So when Sketch dies, this character becomes human and is able to escape into our world, which is kind of awesome. When the game's over, you get a rating. And my superhero meter, as you can see, is not very high. So we're going to start over and take another run at it because I wanted to at least get through the first level. This game, even though you don't see it in this video, has two different endings, which I will not spoil for you, but I thought that was pretty cool. Again, I'm a little bit more knowledgeable this time, so I jump right into it, but I love the way that hand comes in and sketches enemies for you to fight. As soon as I finish this first guy, the hand is going to come in again and sketch another one. So... This game is just so beautiful, and as a comic book nerd, which I am a total comic book nerd, I just love the, the way that the design of this game handles the whole comic book aesthetic. It's awesome, so I'm trying to make short work of this guy. But you see cool, you know, the lighting effects in the background. You see the rain coming down. The rain is only in these panels that I'm in right now. When you look below, you can see it's not raining because those are underground panels. It's just kind of awesome. I mentioned the block move before. The enemies will use that block move all the time. So they are fending off some of my attacks. Now this is an area that I did not explore last time. And interestingly, I find my rat friend in this area. So depending on which path you choose, that kind of changes what you're going to find. Now I have to drop down to the level below and make my way through the sewers, this time from the opposite side. Last time I came in from the other side. And these flying enemies didn't show up till later, so taking a different route definitely changed things this time around. Now I'm in the water, and now these guys are throwing fireballs at me. I like how they disappear, and you don't know where they're going to come up next. But it's kind of awesome when you look at that water and you see the reflection. Plus you're seeing things drop into the water, like, again, from an animation standpoint. This game is, like, ridiculously amazing. And it's referred to as an action platformer. But it feels a lot like a beat-em-up. It almost feels like a more dynamic kind of Streets of Rage. Or Streets of Rage meets like Rolling Thunder, that kind of stuff. I don't know if you get to see me use any of the weapons or not. I forget if I... I think I do. I think I use at least one of them. But I had to take my, my health potion or whatever there. Because I almost got myself killed again. So here we're going to try and not fall down. Like we did last time. And I got these flying enemies again. And this one here. I didn't want to take a running jump because I was going to get killed. but So I finished the first level and now he morphs into like a superhero, so I'm assuming that as the game goes on, you're going to get like superpowers. Maybe if you fill the superhero meter up or something like that. But um, I mentioned those three inventory items up top. This was one of the games that used the six buttons on the second version or, you know, later iteration of the Sega 
your Genesis controller. So you can you had a slot for each one of those items. Now this room is kind of frustrating because these things sort of drop endless spawning enemies. And I had to make my way through the area where the fans are and I had no idea what it was trying to tell me to do. But I think you just have to end up fighting all of these different enemies. So you'll see in a minute that they just keep spawning in from different pods that drop down. I put my pet rat down and he seems to be able to do damage to some of these things. But he's not really helping me out all that much. He's just kind of roaming around. And I'm just stuck in kind of an endless loop. But then I figure out I can at least break the fan. And the reason that I could do that is because he went and shut the switch off as you see him touching the switch there. Before it was on. And when it was on I could not punch out the fan blades. But as soon as he turned it off I was able to do that. So... But I still have no idea how to get out of this room. I'm wondering if I have to destroy the other fan. Or if I just have to continue to fight these enemies until they stop respawning. And you'll see in a minute that a new bad guy spawns into the room. But it wasn't really clear. That's one of the things that it's not really clear. Always what you're supposed to be doing. I do like this enemy design, though. They're almost like little alien and scorpion hybrids, so. This guy spawned in at the last minute. I take care of him. Although, just like with the water, he can sort of pop up out of nowhere. And the rat almost like stunned him or scared him, so that was kind of cool. But now I have no idea where to go until I see the panel arrow drop down, and I think I get myself killed pretty quickly here, so, but that's kind of cool that the box, yeah, the box blows it up and blows me up too, so there you go, so yeah, that's, that's it for this, uh, playthrough of this, but this game is super cool, and I'll probably do another episode on it, I'm gonna try and practice and get a little better, but if you haven't played Comic Zone and you have this collection, I highly recommend it, so, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe to our YouTube page, and I will be back again soon with more retro games, and if you have suggestions, I would love to hear them because uh, it's kind of fun revisiting all of these old games. I'll talk to you soon.